Good morning, everybody. So today is the 18th of January, and it's my first day back at work. And I am going to be shooting this video for you because we're getting into a new year. People are transitioning from school to work. I wanted to start this video on my first day of work. I took the second to be sitting in my office to show that we're back at work, starting a new year on a positive note. And obviously we're going to only be recording the rest of the video after work, but because, you know, I just got into work, I make a better meal for me, and I was just like, you know, I just felt to that thing, like, yes, Miguel, let's do it. Um, it's a new year, there's new things to learn, there's a whole lot of room to grow, and if I in that spirit, I just wanted to do this intro to this video. I am going to be talking about the writing skills, I'm going to be talking about time management, which is very essential. If you, if you don't know this, let me tell you, as an attorney, time is money. So if you're new to this channel, sitting in front of you is Mabula. I am an attorney, a content creator, and a small business owner. If you have not subscribed, subscribe. Please click on the red button down there that says subscribe. And if you want to be notified every time I upload a video, do click on the notification bell so that you do not miss anything. Hey guys, you guys are so lucky. It's 11 minutes past 5 and 2 minutes ago, load shedding happened and everything went out. So I'm about to go home. Hi everybody, welcome to this video. And let's let's just get straight into the video. I don't want this video to be too long. These are just five tricks to help you transition from being a student to being a lawyer slash an attorney. And what I have noticed is that many recently employed graduates or many newly admitted attorneys struggle with legal writing. There is a reason or there are a few reasons for this problem. But the main problem that I have noticed is that university writing and commercial or work environment writing is solely for two different purposes and hence they are they they need you to elicit different things. So for example, in university you write assignments and it's in long form, it's in a way that you need to explain to show that you really understand that legal area and at work it's mainly for communication purposes and for this reason i just thought that this would be the perfect video to start with because people are coming from university going into the workspace if you want to improve on your communication skills you need to make sure that your legal writing is up to scratch so disclaimer other attorneys and lawyers may have different opinions. Your boss might have different opinions from mine. This is solely from my opinion and from things that have helped me out. Some of the titles are a bit weird because I literally didn't know how to put them or put it. So I just put it as simple as I can. Personally, I like speaking as clearly and as concisely as possible so that everybody can understand even if you're not an attorney you can understand what it is i am trying to say to you okay so let's just get into it so tip number one is and um, they don't care how much law you know so in university you'll get an assignment you'll get a question you'll get a scenario and there's hidden things in the scenario that you guys have learned throughout the course of the year or the course of the month and you guys are now doing an assignment and you answering the question you need to understand well, okay we are now in the law of delict you need to point out certain words that okay this is underneath this chapter this is what it's talking about that is what it's basically trying to do and trying to see if you really understand and understood that chapter if you can really apply it and if you understand that legal area now when you go to work the main reason for you to do any legal writing is for the for the purposes of communicating with your client. Sometimes, yes, if not most, 
you are going to do a whole lot of research. Let's say you want to do some research and you want to do some legal writing and you want to maybe submit it to your boss to say, this is how I'm planning on approaching this, this is how I'm planning on drafting and, you know, um, how I'm going to go about my arguments and this is, this is the research that I've made. But if you're going to be doing it to a client, you can't take that 10 pages that you took to your attorney and whereas you can explain it in two pages to your client. So for example, a client comes in and tells you that maybe they have a contract dispute, okay? And when the client comes back for some feedback, you're not now going to give your client a 10 page document where you explain to them this is what a contract is and then there is the diff there's a difference between a verbal and a written contract the requirements of a written contract whereas in an assignment at school that is what they expect from you they expect you to tell them what is a contract what makes a contract valid what makes it invalid what invalidates it breach the essentials of a contract all those things your client doesn't want to know your client just wants to literally basically know the right answer like how do we move all right um, i feel like number two is really important so i think i'm going to say it last um legal writing is just trying to write like a normal person this one and the first point go hand in hand and the reason why i wrote this is because well, from something that i've noticed from my current boss is that when you give him a report, this is not even about clients now, but it go, at, at the end of the day, it does go to clients. Um, when, when for, like I was saying, uh, right now, I'm talking about my boss, like, when you give him a report on something, like, as much as he understands legal jargon, as much as he understands big words and all that, when you explain to him or when you report back to him, he wants you to just explain simply. Obviously, you need to be well-spoken and speak properly, but you don't need to use and all these Shakespearean English just to sound like you know a lot of words, you know, it's it's really unnecessary. That's, that, goes, that goes in the same breath as when you're speaking to your attorneys when you are like when you're speaking to an opponent, when you're speaking to a client, when you're writing letters, like you don't need to use all these words that are like like just speak like a normal person. Your points come across your points come across quickly. Like some some things are like not necessary. I feel like next time you write do legal writing and you go through it and you take out certain phrases and certain words you'll realize that, you know what, maybe I can do without them and maybe my opinion is brought forward a little bit quickly because I didn't necessarily use these Shakespeare English. One thing that you need to appreciate is that you are already an attorney. You, you are a lawyer. So you don't need to act like it. You just need to do your work and be concise and be straight to the point. You know what I mean? So that's just what I meant when I said that legal writing is just you trying to write like a normal person. Number three is avoiding redundancy. What is the word redundancy? Well, off the bat of my head, redundancy is just repeating certain things over and over again without actually realizing. I personally had a problem with being very redundant. I'd say something in the previous paragraph and I'd say that, as I've mentioned in the above paragraph, I said that if a word or a phrase adds no meaning to the communication, then remove it. Avoiding redundancy also goes into you being very straight to the point. So. Sometimes your letter will come across as being short and sometimes when your letter is short it sometimes may be impolite because you have avoided a lot of the pleasantries. 
Okay, for example, if you're writing a courteous letter to your opponent, um, a courteous letter is basically maybe you're reminding them to do something. Maybe the plaintiff attorney has been really quiet on one matter for maybe four months and nothing is happening, and then you come across that matter. Let me open it, and then you realize that, oh my goodness, the plaintiff has not done anything in the last four months. So you will take it upon yourself to write them a courteous letter where you say, are you guys still proceeding on this letter? If you're not proceeding, please let us know so that we can also just close this file because our client wants to know what's happening on this matter. A lot of people like writing this. That letter on its own is a courteous letter to your opponent. You need not say in a courteous letter that, we are writing this courteous letter to find out if it's not necessary. You already doing that is showing that you are being courteous. So that is another form of avoiding redundancy. Point number four. Point number four is strike the right tone. This can be a hard one, okay, when you're not necessarily writing to your own clients, but you need to learn which tone is appropriate to which recipient. Context can help to say, okay, who am I writing to? Okay, what am I writing about? Am I writing to someone that I don't, I don't know? Am I writing to someone that I've met before? That you need to strike the right tone with the right people at the right time because sometimes you want to come across as being too serious, Sometimes you don't want to come across as being not serious enough to be taken serious. You know what I mean? Like, so, it's like, it's like when you write an email, and it's an email that you're writing to someone that you know. An email is something that is, is less formal than like a fax and a letter. So you know that when you're writing an email to someone, it's like, you know, Yo, Zani, you guys haven't worked on the matter for the past four months. How? What's happening? And then if it's maybe someone that you don't know, you can write them a letter and do your dear sirs, dear madams, and put your point across to say, if y'all don't do anything, we won't remove this matter. And then the last point is that time is of the essence. Let me tell you that I am of the opinion that the phrase that time is money was created in a law firm. The moment you get into the office to the moment you leave the office, that is time. Someone is paying for that. Either it's the company or it's the client. Or what I want you to get, what I want you guys to realize is that the moment you get hired, you have a value. There's value on you. You'll even notice in the magistrate in the high court in your in your court in your court room that when you're drafting summons, you there, there's a <clears throat> there's a rate for candidate attorneys, there's a rate for attorneys, there's a rate for senior attorneys. You have a rate. So if a summons was drafted by a candidate attorney, you charge a certain amount. So you mean like this is me trying to tell you guys that you guys are valuable. If anybody just tries to make you feel undervalued, let me tell you, you are a valuable person. You are an asset. And because you are an asset, you need to treat yourself like an asset. You cannot waste time, okay? And for an example, if someone, if your boss or if your senior gives you a task and then they don't give you a time limit, Give yourself a time limit because you honestly cannot be working on a letter of demand for two days. You need to assign times and time limits to certain tasks because if you overdo it, then the company is going to pay for it because a client is not going to be impressed that you wrote a letter of demand and it took you three days and then you're going to charge your, your 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 client for drafting a letter that could have taken you 30 minutes or an hour and then you're making them pay for a whole two days you know what i mean so and i feel like one thing that could also assist and that makes us not realize that time is of the essence is that in school when they give us an assignment here at varsity let's say it's a tuesday 
you get into international law and teacher teaches, lecturer teaches, or lecturer lectures, and at the end of the lecture, he hands out assignments and he says, I want these back next week, Tuesday. It doesn't matter if you hand that, it doesn't matter if Mabula hands in that assignment the next day or Peter hands in his assignment the next week before class or if Matilda hands it in at class next to Tuesday you guys are going to be rated in the same way they give no credit to how long it takes you to do an assignment which is which is something that I feel that they should do because if they did that in varsity then you will also realize that when you get to work you shouldn't spend too much time on one thing for example I was just thinking maybe like if I don't know how they would do it this is just my personal opinion now don't come for me but I was just thinking if they give you an assignment and they say okay it's a Tuesday and they say no we want you guys to submit this at the next class on Friday and then they say all the students who are able to submit a proper and complete assignment by Thursday half past nine in the morning get an extra four marks I feel like that will also instill the efficiency of you doing your assignments quickly but properly because that will also help you when you go to work that you're kind of at school they used to say if you end in your assignment quickly, you get four marks extra. So here is if you do your assignment quicker, you get to do more work and you don't become a liability to the firm because when you overcharge on your fees, it becomes a problem for the client. And in some of those things, your own boss, the people in the finance can't even take those things to the client because it's just so embarrassing. And that means that the company has to pay for that time so the company is losing <clears throat> you need to be an asset to your company there are four points that i have i think it's four yeah it's four points on how to how to overcome spending too much time on one thing so the first thing is that know exactly what you are doing know how you are going to go about it there is no point in you going back to your office and not even knowing where to start the third thing that i wrote is that plan specifically how long you think the 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 task will take you to accomplish it if it's a novel task then uh, that you have no idea about then ask apply the, the specific time on something because you don't want to be spending too much time on something that only needs an hour and that's why you need to declutter your mind it's very difficult to do that let me tell you especially when you have a lot of files and a lot of matters but it is very important and i know i'm saying something that i am not implementing right now on my desk but there's a reason why <laughs> it's my first day back one thing that helps is having one file on your desk it helps declutter your mind obviously in your mind you have different compartments that you can and sometimes you can't declutter because maybe you have a trial tomorrow now you're working on other things now today and then you're still thinking about your trial that's just that's just something that happens naturally but physically try and declutter the space that you're working in because what that also does is that sometimes you put the wrong things in the wrong files because there's so many files on your table and it clutters things and it also clutters your mind and your train of thought so if you have like three files two are stacked up there the one is the one that you're working on it helps you and you you are able to work on that task efficiently and you are able to um, to finish on that task and move on to the next one another thing that also helps i know guys are not people but you are the least and not everybody is a list person me personally i am a list person i am i think it also goes hand in hand with my star sign i am a list person every day when i get into the office i do a to-do list 
I have a to-do list and it just helps you even though other things are gonna come. like it's just a frame just to structure if the task is big what I like to do if the task is really big I like to put the task until the end of the day because at the end of the day I have this time you see now we have load shedding but if we didn't have load shedding I know that from half past four to six I can work on that big task that I was given and I can even send it to the other attorneys because everybody has access to their email I can send it to them like at seven o'clock at night and at least it's out of my inbox out of my drops and in their inbox and they have an opinion on it just put time for your matters you know like if a matter is going to take you a long time assign enough time for each task and i think i have an extra tip oh the bonus tip is that some things do not require you to write an email a letter or anything in black and white i am saying this because sometimes you are in the wrong and when you are in the wrong you do not want that to be done in black and white because it will be used against you by your opponent. Trust me and believe me. And I feel like people do that when they are scared to pick up the phone. Sometimes you just pick up the phone and apologize, speak to the attorney and say, I am so sorry this and this happened. I will literally be sending it to you at the end of this phone call and let it be done, you know. But if you admit to say, I'm so sorry for filing this late, and then at the end or in the trial when they don't have something and they have, you know, they have erred on their matter, they can even take out that email to say, Your Worship, the defendant has been filing things late to the point where they even sent us an email admitting and apologizing for their lateness and it is because of them being late your worship that we were not able to do to prepare for trial properly and it's on you and then the wasted costs for that day go on you so don't do it sometimes i know it can be scary to just pick up the phone but just tell yourself what number two answer is this person doesn't know me and even if the person knows you um, and I feel like in a phone call, you can say, you can be more sympathetic than you are in a letter, you know. In a, in a, in a, in a, in a phone call, you can say, Oh, Peter, I am so, so, so sorry for not filing this and this and this. You guys are going to get it by the end of the day. I promise. I really, really apologize. It's so hectic by here. We're having system problems. You know what? It's just so hectic. I'm even thinking of working from home tomorrow with my own network because... It's terrible at the office. Those are things that you can't really write in a letter. So in a letter, it's just going to be like, we apologize for one, two, three, four, five. We'll definitely get it by the end of the day. Kind regards, or yours truly. And the person who's reading this letter, I don't know. This one doesn't know me. This one doesn't know me. So yeah, those are just the tips that I just wanted to share with you guys. Um, I hope these help. I, these are tips that I still use today and I hope they help you guys. I'm wishing you guys a happy and productive and healthy new year. I know it's been a difficult year already. It's only been 18 days in the year but it's already so hard and I just want to say thank you to everybody. And I just wanted to let everybody know because <laughs> I have decided that this channel is going to be a lawyer corner based channel only. And I just wanted to do vlogmas just for one, you know. Um, I do love doing vlogs, I'm not going to lie. So it's just going to be about the lawyer corner, all the information that I have for you. But now and then, Guys, please allow me, please allow me because one thing vlog does for me, vlog with family, vlog with friends, is that I get to capture moments and save them and get to watch them later. I mean like two years ago I did a vlog of my dad's 60th birthday and the other day I was watching it and it made him smile and he couldn't believe that we still had the footage. So like please do allow me, but it is going to be based on 
lawyer stuff from now on. All my sit downs are gonna be about lawyer corner and sometimes I'm just gonna do a vlog here and there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. But anyway, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do this. Please please click on the red button or the red word, the red box that says subscribe. And if you want to be notified every time I upload a video, do click on the notification bell. And don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms. I am Mapuna underscore Sitosa. Absolutely everywhere. Thank you guys. But I just wanted to do this video for you guys. And yeah, Happy New Year. I love you.